Hi, I'm the Chunky Jeweler, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make one of these. So this texture is commonly known as a sandblast finish, or a satin finish, and I'll be showing you how to get that effect without expensive tools. So, join me at the bench, and I'll show you how. So like I said in the previous clip, the whole focus of today's video is not on actual making of the wedding band, but the process of putting the texture on the band so it appears like it has been sandblasted. Um, like a satin finish, sandblasted look. People call it lots of different things, but um, yeah. So if you want to know how to make a wedding band, you'll see the process over here in this video. But um, I've got a more in-depth video on the channel. I might link it up somewhere. Um, you can follow the whole process of, how to, process of how to make a wedding band. But in this one, we're going to be focusing on the texture. So, let's get started. First thing we do, we cut the ends off. Well, one end at least. So, file that so it's nice and true. You might notice that this bit, strip of metal is not perfectly straight around to the slight angle narrowing and that's why I decided to just use it as is so what I'll do I'll bend it into the size I need flush up the one side then measure with my dividers to get a nice parallel line and I'll chop the excess off and it should end up with a nice straight roughly six millimeter wide wedding band it's currently 10 mil there and 9.3 on the other end so almost a millimeter difference but we'll get that sorted no problem no time <laughs> So when you're truing up the end, just try and focus on these corners, on these corners. You want to try and just roughly get a nice 90, 90 degree angle on those corners, then it should be fairly straight. We'll true it up more when, once we've bent it. Okay, so what you can do Take your half round pliers, flat out ones, just curl the edges ever so slightly. So you could go with this all the way around to bend it, out with this nifty little pliers, bending pliers, so I'll just this way I can clearly see that the one side is quite a bit wider than the other side. But there's not a we were anticipating that. So I'll just get that join fairly flush. I'll just 
give it one cut. previous video the reason why we do that is to get that joint nice and flush you don't want any visible gaps I think that's tight enough there's a bit of a gap that side and that's fine because we're not we'll be cutting that away we only need about that width for the project that we're doing today Okay, let's get it sold. Okay, I've got my trusty plate solder. Got a generous amount. I might just cut an extra piece for good measure. So when soldering this is good uh, it's good practice just to warm up the whole ring. Apply heat evenly throughout the ring. <coughs> Especially with silver. So, generous amount of flux. Warm up the solder. Put in place. And watch the magic happen. Good thing we had an extra piece. Side as well, just to make sure that the solder has gone all the way through. That should do. Quench it in the ashes, and I'll be back. Okay, so it's all cleaned up. Well, from the acid, all the oxidization is off. All I need to do now is make it nice and round and um, get rid of that excess. So we're going to have something that resembles a wedding band. Let's go to the ring stretcher. Okay, so we're at the ring stretcher. And for those of you who are not familiar with this little tool, this is a must have in any jeweler's workshop. So this is the more expensive one it's got the ring bending attachment on the sides i don't use it very often i must be honest because so i've got a little nifty plier of mine but yeah good quality uh thurston ring stretcher it's got the crimping attachment the ring bending attachment and obviously the stretching bit so definitely must have. So we start just pushing the ring on the cone here. So just get it slowly. You don't want to pop the join. And already it's looking much better. 
So with these wide rings, you've got to be careful not to stretch it too much. You might flange out the, the flatness of the band. But once again, we're not too fussed about this one because we not really making the band for resale I'm just doing this band as a prop essentially to show you how to do the texture on it I think that should oops that should do it Now to get rid of that. Cool, back to the bench. So I'll just pull this out a bit. See, or you might notice that I'm <clears throat> turning the ring as I'm filing it. That assures that you get a nice, um, even side. And then we can use that side, that edge, to mark out our band and it should be fairly parallel and straight and we'll clean up that join and get ready to prepare our band for our satin texture or sandblast texture without the sandblaster. <laughs> Let's get it marked. And that will do. So when cutting this, <coughs> excuse me, you want to stay just outside of the line because that'll that'll um, just give you a bit of leeway in case you slip or you go slightly off and then you don't cut into the which will essentially be the band this is the waist side this is the band side and this side you don't care about, but this side you don't want to damage. So I generally just go all around with my first cut, just to get my groove on. <laughs> essentially just gives you a guideline of where you want to cut the track essentially for your saw blade to run in because your saw blade could potentially just veer off it could be a bit tricky in some cases to control especially with silver Tends to be a bit of a sticky metal. Get some lube. Lube is never a bad thing. Let's start cutting. I'm 
might just speed this process up for you. It gets a bit boring. <laughs> No more Okay, so that's done. So what we do now is clean up this edge. So you just want to take off this inside sharp edge. It's not a full comfort fit. You just break off that corner, round off that corner. To get rid of that sharpness. And it essentially does add to the comfort of the thing. Because you don't want that edge digging into your finger while rolling it. And I know this is just a... call it it's not a real ring it's just a decoy ring to do the texture finish but still I want it to be comfortable hmm. okay, okay. okay so next step We'll clean up the join, outside of the join. Just lightly with your file. Once again, you don't want to file a flat spot into the ring. Make sure you file with that curve. around the whole ring to make sure we've got a nice flat edge as you may notice oops let me get it right currently if I'm filing the file is catching there and there so this is what I meant at the ring stretcher where the outside flange is out ever so slightly and you want to try and avoid that and this is exactly what kind of happened at a very minimal scale so we want to get that edge nice and flat and even as, as I've already done there okay so I'm just going to lightly go around the whole ring okay now for sandpaper ring For sanding, for your, for my American viewers, you don't call it sandpapering, you just call it sanding. I suppose that's my Afrikaans translation. Sandpaper, we call it in Afrikaans skier papier. So, a little bit of a language lesson thrown in there. So, it's crucial that when you, when sanding this bit, to get it nice and flat and even. Because this is a nice trick with the texture finish that I'm going to show you shortly but unfortunately it only works well it works best on a flat surface I have done it on half rounded bands before and it can be done but it is a lot more tricky to do so we'll leave that for a much later video so I'm 
just gonna go through the motions of sanding this out a bit. Might just fast forward or speed up the reel again for the video so you guys don't get bored. So that was 400 grit. I'm going straight in with the 800. With silver you can do that because uh, it's a lot softer, the metal is a lot softer. With platinum you don't have that luxury. You've got to go through the motions using each grid. So fast forward once again. Oh, speed up that reel. Wiki wiki. So if there's anyone out there that doesn't know how to make a paper stick like this one, um, <laughs> drop me a comment in the comment section and I'll be happy to show you how to make these as well. I'm just taking it for granted that I've been making jewelry for so long that this is this is the very essential part of your toolkit and if you don't have to make it properly it can be a hindrance or annoyance so if you're keen to, for me to show you how to make these just smash the like button and uh, drop me a comment and I'll happily make a video and show you how to make these So now that we've papered this band, it's fairly well prepared. Then we can jump onto the polishing motor and get it buffed up. Get it all shiny. Realistically, we don't have to shine it up, but I think for the purpose of this video, the effect would show up better with, on the footage if it was shiny before I start with started the finish, the textured, textured finish. So yeah, off to the polish machine we go. Okay, so the star of the show, essential part of this video, would be this and this. If everyone's familiar with talcum powder, baby powder, I blur out the name just to. Be clear, none of these items are sponsored. Um, you can buy these on Wish or Amazon, and they quite handy, especially this little drum, sandpaper drum. But for this particular video, this one is essential. So, what you're going to need to do is place your little diamond burr in your handpiece make sure it's nice and secure and slip apply some powder on your fingers a liberal amount Take your ring, place it in your fingers like this. Let's see that.
then gently bring your diamond burr closer and let it spin. Nice finish. We still have a bit of a dull spot down the center, which we'll get rid of momentarily. To get rid of that, you just Get a little bit slower. And go across the band in a zigzag motion, very slowly, just to get an even surface. satin finish on the wedding band or the sandblasted look without the sandblasting
Well, that's it folks. That brings us to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you made it this far, um, thank you very much. And hopefully you learned something. Um, it's a little bit of a trick that I've had for many, many years. And every time I've used it when I started a new workshop, it seemed to always amaze everyone how quick and easy it can be. Uh, instead, instead of sitting there with a little drill bit or uh, getting the sandblaster out if you, don't, if, you don't, if you have a sandblaster available to you. Um, but yeah, I really hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate you watching. If you don't mind, just smash that uh, like button. Um, whack this notification bell. And uh, yeah, nothing else for me to say, but thanks for watching. Chunky Jola out.